In Search of Lost Time, the classic sequence of novels by Marcel Proust. Part 2. The Budding Grove. Many years have passed since the Comrade days, when I was a child and each spring would visit my great aunt Leonie with my mother and father. And many years too since I used to come in from one of the two walks we used to take and see the reflection of the sunset glowing in the panes of my bedroom window. It's a very different life I lead now at the house of Tansonville with Mrs. de saint Loup. In the evening I walk the same lanes by moonlight that I used to walk as a child in sunshine. And instead of sunset when I come back, I see a single lamp glowing in my bedroom window like a solitary beacon in the night. Memories shift and collide in my mind. I hear a young boy's voice, Mama. alone, Mama. fretful. Why didn't you come and say goodnight? It's myself, waiting for my mother to return and give me the kiss she promised. Are you going to be a brave boy for me? Mama! Everything moves round you in the darkness. And now, you're older. If only Mr. Swan would come. In your parents' apartment in Paris. Mama, nervous. A red spot on her neck. The Marquis of Norpois is coming to dinner. He could entertain him. Or, or Professor Cotard. Cotard? Yes. An eminent man of science who'd grace any dinner table. But Swan? Oh, I only thought... Oh, would Mr. de Norpois enjoy the company of Swan, you think? Uh, I only... I don't think so. With his ostentation, with his habit of crying aloud from every rooftop the name of everyone he knows, I don't think so. Swan? No, 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 no. Papa, you were wrong about Swan. I don't think the Marquis de Norpois would like him at all. Why did you think that? I remember the garden gate with his little bell at Combray, when Charles Swan would visit, and me, listening from an upstairs window, banished. Mr. Swan. Good evening, Mr. Swan. Swan. A man of modesty, discretion, refinement, who had married the wrong woman, Odette de Cressy. I'm an ignorant woman in search of fine things. Since she was considered tainted, he'd adapted to the humble ambitions of this lady and made for himself, a long way beneath the old, a new position more appropriate to life with her. He was never invited to our house again. And you were in love with his daughter, Gilbert. I think we'll manage without Swan. I said to the Emperor, watch the Prussians. Ah. More potatoes. Who was this Norpois? Put your ear to the ground, I said. He was the Minister Plenipotentiary before the war, Ambassador. If you wish to know which way the wind's blowing. Controller of debts in Egypt, an aristocrat of a certain type. That's all I said. Brought up from the cradle... I think he got my point. ...to regard himself oh. as an innate asset. No man should expect a permanent place in history. And for this man, Mama, you were all a twitter. Put your ear to the ground by all means. But be careful they don't stamp on your head. Eh? Huh? Very good. Uh, stamp on your head. Oh. I sit at the table expecting to be sent to bed at any moment. But if these fellows become bellicose, then you'll see the fur fly. Yes, indeed. Would you like some more spears, Your Excellency? Madam, I fear I shall grow fat at your table. Oh. <laughs> You'll be winching me into my carriage. Oh. <laughs> Surely a little more asparagus. Yeah, he's, he's had enough. Well, uh, just a little more, perhaps. Oh. So, young man. Yes, sir? Tell us what profession you intend to follow. Speak up, Marcel. Let's hear it. Papa wanted you to be a diplomat. You didn't want that. They'd send you abroad and you wouldn't see Gilbert anymore. Literature, sir. Uh, li li yes. Yes, that's what I said. It's not even a proper career. How interesting. I'm sorry. He wishes to be a writer. Oh, so he says. Admirable. Oh. He hasn't actually committed anything to paper as yet. Oh, but he likes to read. Oh, yes, he likes to read. It's quite possible for a writer to attract as much attention and to exercise as much influence as any ambassador. And, at the same time... To reserve more independence. Well, uh, well, there, there may be some truth. A friend of mine has a son whose case is very much like your own. Two books under his belt already. Oh. oh yes. Really? 
First one about the sense of the infinite on the shores of Lake Victoria. It oh. was very well for him. Second one looks like going very much the same way. Its subject? The repeating rifle and the Bulgarian army. Oh. Um, yes. Why don't you look him up, young man? It's a good idea. Tell him I sent you. Oh, my God. Thank you, sir. In the meantime, write me something. Hmm? Show me what you can do. All right, sir. Tell me, sir. Hmm? Ah, pain as yet unfelt. What new torment is reserved for me? That evening is fixed in my memory. All that I have suffered. My fears, my passion, the fury of my desire. That afternoon I went at last to a performance by the actress Berma. The unbearable agony of being refused. Racine's Phaedra. They love each other. Your life seemed so flat, so boring to you, so pointless. There must be something else. The theatre, you thought. Every day you'd run out to read the posters stuck outside the apartment. Advertisements for the new plays. The theatre. Yes! You nearly didn't go. Please, Mama. Your health again. You heard what the doctor said. I'm all right, please. What if you get ill while you're there? I won't. This is going to be very drafty. Let him go. What? Let him go if he wants to. Papa, I could have hugged you. I could have kissed your beard. Well, what harm can it do? But I was afraid of annoying you. Well, what if he comes home ill and it, and it lasts for weeks? All right, I won't go, Mama. If it'll worry you. No. Go. You enjoy yourself. Another burden. Now, I had to enjoy myself. How often do they speak? How often meet? I went anyway. But couldn't quite... In what hidden depths of the forest did they hide themselves? Oh! Couldn't quite... Ah! Get on with it. I tried to like it. I tried to think... Why does everybody like this? <laughs> Was that it? That's what I call a fine job of acting, wouldn't you say? And what did you think of Burma? I presume you were enchanted. Well, sir... Yes? Well, well... well speak up. Actually, I was disappointed. Disapp well... Disappointed? The boy doesn't know what he's talking about. With Burma? You disappointed? You see what I'm faced with? How interesting. Hmm? Let's hear what he's got to say. Your grandmother said you were hanging on every word. I was trying to find out what was so wonderful about her. But she disappointed you. I'm very sorry. Surely you noticed her voice. Her voice? Its musical quality. Yes. And her choice of roles. Hmm? Impeccable. Hmm? She chooses very well, sir. Yes. And her costumes. Her costumes. What do you think of those? <sighs> Unforgettable. I think so. You see? You weren't disappointed at all. No, sir. Good night, Mr. de Norpois. Madam, I'm obliged for the comfort you've offered an old bachelor. Sir, good night. I'm standing on the threshold of life. Bit stuffy, wasn't he? Possibly. Though shrewd. He has a sort of simplicity. Does he? Extraordinary. He should have dined with the swans and found respectable people there. Papa? Still up. Listen. You look worried. Listen, it doesn't matter about the diplomatic service. You decide. Be happy. That's all that matters. You aren't a child anymore. It's very unlikely that you'll change now. Until Papa said that to me, I didn't know I was living in time. And now, in theory, you know the earth is always turning, but you don't actually see it. That's how it is with time in our lives. And now, my existence had begun. I was being carried away from... 
From what? Combray. Walks around the village with my family. The two paths, the Hawthorne, and love. And now my life would never change back. I was alone. Dear Gilbert, I have to see you. Meet me in the Champs Elysees. Gilbert. That is my name. Yes. What did you want to say to me? I... I didn't know what you looked like. <laughs> what does that mean? It means... It means I'd forgotten. Somebody's face. You can't always keep track of it. Everything gets blurred. Does it? Yes, I mean... Particularly when you love someone. Don't know what you're talking about. Did I tell you I greatly admire your father? Do you? Yes. Why? He's so intelligent and, and so cultured. Oh, that's a shame. Why? He can't stand you. <laughs> oh, I've hurt you now. <laughs> listen, listen. You're soppy. Do you know that? Gilbert, I'll write him. I'll tell him. Do what you like. You're furious. The father of the girl you're in love with doesn't like you. How can that be? And what catastrophe does it augur? Well? Yes? My letter. Your... To your father. Did he read it? Yes, I think he did. I don't know. Didn't he say anything? Yes. Uh, let me think. He said... All this means nothing. Nothing? Nothing. He said that? Yes. I can't believe it. Well, he said it. Do you want your letter back? No. I admire him. Well, he doesn't admire you. Wrestle me for it. What? Why don't you wrestle me for it? You're a girl. And? <laughs> I'll wipe the floor with you. <laughs> or perhaps you don't want your letter. Give it to me. <laughs> no, sorry. It's mine. Give it to me. <laughs> cross, cross, boy. <laughs> Take it. No, oh, you can't. You missed it. I hold her hand. The other she thrusts behind her back. Come on. Do you want it? <laughs> ah. No, no. Sorry. <laughs> I'll get you. I put my arms around her neck. What? I'll show you. Show me what? I hold her with my legs, pinning her against a tree. Uh, you're stronger than you look. Yes. And in the middle of my gymnastics. What's the matter? Nothing. Nothing. I... Oh, God. Oh... You've gone all loose. You all right? Here's your letter. Do that again, shall we? When you're not so floppy. Soppy. <laughs> you coming here tomorrow? I might. Then again, I might not. She came back. You weren't there. He was out walking. I blame myself. You had a fever. Was that it? Breathe in. <coughs> hmm. Again? Doctor. And you get attacks of breathlessness. Yes, it's when he... Can I ask the boy? I can't breathe. I don't know why. When? I don't understand. When does your breath leave you? He's, he's always been prone to fevers. It's not a fever. This tightness of chest, breathlessness, you need to relax. Take, take alcohol in moderation. Alcohol? Yes. Slight euphoria will relax the chest muscles, and that's... That's what he needs. Get him a bottle of champagne. Oh, my poor boy. My grandmother's eyes wet with love. Don't worry, Granny. Please, don't worry. Here, a little brandy. That's it. Sip. 
You're better? Kiss. Kiss me. Your face is wet. It's nothing. It's nothing. That doctor is not asked back. Instead, Dr. Kotar is asked for his advice. Purges. Violent purges. His bony face bends over you. Violent and drastic purges. Milk for some days. Nothing but milk. It isn't enough that a physician should be learned. No meat. No alcohol. In fact, it's better if he isn't. But doesn't he need to be built up? Confronted with symptoms he can't possibly understand. I am not in the habit of repeating my prescriptions. It's his style that decides on a diagnosis. Mama and Papa ignore him. You grow worse. So they follow his prescription to the letter and your cough ceases. We conclude that this imbecile is a great physician. A letter for you. My dear friend. Gilbert. I hear that you have been very ill and have given up going to the Champs-Élysées. My friends come to tea here every Monday and Friday. My mother asks me to tell you that it will be a great pleasure to us all if you will come too, as soon as you are well again. With all my kindest regards... Life is strewn with such miracles for which people who love can always hope. Where are you going? Out. But you're ill. <laughs> Not now. She'll bear it in her life. The exotic charm of Mr. and Mrs. Swan, so different from my own parents, and the scent on the staircase of that house. These memories combine to produce an image of a walk on a May morning in the Bois de Boulogne. I'm arm in arm with Mrs. Swan. The sun is warm. She asks me to hold her coat and then opens her parasol in the deep shade of a wisteria bar. But that was later. This came first. Come in. You're Marcel. Yes. I know your parents. How do you do? Thank you for inviting me. No, no, it's a pleasure. You're pale. I've been somewhat ill. <laughs> somewhat. Mm. So I hear. You're pale and interesting. That's very attractive. I've come to see Gilbert. Yes, and no doubt you're expecting me to tell you where she is. Well, I've no idea. <laughs> I'm an awful mother, aren't I? No, I'm sure you're not. You're sweet. And here's my husband. How do you do? Good afternoon. You've changed. Of course he's changed. Unless he still hangs out of bedroom windows, pleading with his mother to come and kiss him goodnight. Well, now you've embarrassed him. He doesn't mind. Of course he minds. What will you think of us? I think you're very nice. Never rush to judgments. Oh, take my arm. We'll leave this person to his own crudity. And we will seek my daughter. You visit every day. You haunt the upstairs rooms. Somewhere in the house, Mrs. Swan is having an at home. This peculiar, disturbing charm through which you fly. I feel as if I could eat something. A dining room, dark as the Asiatic tomb in a Rembrandt. Come on, this is for us. A cake on the table, apparently there, just on the off chance that Gilbert might get hungry. Hmm. This is a tea party. Have some tea. When do your parents dine? Mm. I, I don't know. No memory of my family survived. Tea? Please. It'll keep you awake for 24 hours. Mm, it's good, isn't it? In fact, in Gilbert's company, no memory at all survived. A bit more cake? Thank you, yeah. Nor fear of the future. Oh, so boring. People can be so boring, not that one doesn't enjoy them. Is it me? Oh, are you having tea? This looks nice. <laughs> Join us, Mama. Makes me feel so hungry. Mama, we invite you. Oh, I can't, I can't. I've still got Mrs. Trombert and Mrs. Cotard and Mrs. Bonton. As you know, she never pays short visits and she's only just come. Oh, what would they all say if I didn't go back to them? And stayed here with you two. Mm. You look comfy, are you? Are you comfy? <laughs> yes, thank you. You look it. Yes, Mama, we're very comfy. Good. Good. Oh, I'm stuffed. Are you? Yes, I think I am. <laughs> Your mouth. <laughs> it's all chocolate. <laughs> Sun in your eyes, Marcel. Put this up. That walk, why has it stayed with me? 
When I think back to those times, it isn't, Mrs. Swan. What is it then? Come in. I've come to see if Gilbert. She isn't like... here, and you've come all this way. She gone out. A friend, I don't know, something. What shall we do? In Gilbert's increasing absence, I visit her mother more, wafting along the corridor behind her, in a cloud of exotic essences, sensuous, and melancholy. I don't know. Shall we go out? Such a nice day. Well, it's too bad. I don't know where Gilbert thinks she's gone. We'll forget her, shall we? Her lovely hands peep from the coloured sleeves of her crepe de chine. Hello. Passing men keep speaking to her. She doesn't deserve a friend like you. She said to me she'd be at home. I said to her, he comes every day. His face so sad. What can I say to you? Good morning, madam. Hello. Is the sun in your eyes? I'll put this up. That's better. It's so nice to be walking with you, Marcel. Oh, would you hold my coat for me? The coat. Is that it? Sometimes she plays the piano. Oh, if I can get this right. You're doing very well. Vantee's theme. Really, I'm impressed. Bravo! Don't you think? Swan had long ago stopped caring whether a debt had been or still was unfaithful to him. Yes. Complimenting her on every silly story she told. <laughs> And I said, I said, if that's a Fabergé egg, I'm a Dutchman. <laughs> Blind, seemingly, to the mediocrity of her mind. No, not quite right. What? If that's a Vermeer, I'm a Dutchman. You see? Does it matter? No. Not at all. You're so boring. It's better the way you tell it. I know it is. As though that jealousy he'd once felt for Odette. I love that music, don't you? When I think back of my troubles and my loves in those long ago days, the music shows me nothing, but instead it reflects like water, like a mirror, those things I never paid attention to, like the static side of moonlight. That sounds pretentious. Oh, why don't you shut up? He had a new mistress now, but couldn't let her debt out of his sight. It's as though play something else. How about Wagner? No. As though the jealousy he'd once felt for a debt had poisoned his love forever, and yet the charm I once felt in that house is still present for me. Was it in the carpets and the sofas, in the tapestries and paintings? Was it imprinted in me as I sat there waiting, thinking? Soon, any moment now, Mr. and Mrs. Swan will come through that door, and all this despite the fact that I was losing their daughter. Gilbert, what? Where are you going? Dancing. Do you have to dance every day? You're not being very nice to me. It's you who aren't being very nice. How am I not being nice? I'll do anything you want. No, that's no good. Why? It just wouldn't be any good. I can't explain. What? You'll see. Gilbert. A storm blowing in my heart so violent, it could only be appeased in her company. Miss Swan, is she in? Sir, the young lady is not at home. What? I can assure you, sir, that I'm speaking the truth. If the young lady was at home, I can assure you that I would take you to her at once. Go to hell. Certainly, sir. Between lovers, it comes down to this: beg her too much, she'll leave you; beg her too little, she'll leave you. It's all in the degree of begging. Gilbert. Oh dear, she's just gone out. She'll be so sorry to have missed you. Come to lunch tomorrow. What's the point? She asked. She asked. Yes, specifically. Tomorrow. That's right. She said, "I must ask you. Can you come?" Yes. Good. My aunt Leonie had bequeathed to me a vase of Chinese porcelain. I sell it 
so I can buy flowers for Gilbert. To my surprise, the man offers me 10,000 francs for it. This means I can smother Gilbert in white roses for a whole year. But on the way to her house, I see her going in the opposite direction. She's with a young man. I saw her. She'll be so disappointed to have missed you. No, I saw her. She's probably just gone out for a breath of air with, with one of a her... man. You saw her with a yes. No, I don't think that could have been her. I saw her. What lovely flowers! I'll put them in water. When we construct our lives for one person and that person doesn't come, then she dies to us. But we live on. A prisoner inside the walls we intended only for her. Even then, even then, it seemed to me I had to lock up my love, or I would lose it. It couldn't go unrestrained. I go back to that day when I see Gilbert walking away from her house, in the company of a man, or that's what he looked like. I find out much later that in fact, it was another woman, dressed as a man. Yes. The actress Leia, famous for her tastes. Gilbert. I didn't shout, and she didn't turn. Yet, sorrows fade. And when I look back to that time, what I remember most is walking on a May morning with Mrs. Swan. Is the sun in your eyes? I'll put this up. That's better. Under her parasol, I feel I'm beneath the coloured shade of a wisteria bar. Would you hold my coat for me? Yes, yes. She hands me the coat, and I see for the first time the detailed stitching on her blouse. And it's like something has been revealed for the first time, like a shell opening, and behind, inside, a different pattern, something mysterious because normally hidden from view, like those Gothic carvings on a cathedral. Hidden on the balustrade, eighty feet above the ground, yet never seen except by someone who gets permission to climb up there, and walks about in the open air, looking down on the town, there, between the soaring towers. Florence. No. Venice. No, I'm sorry. Rome. I'm sorry. Where then? That summer considered too unwell for the places I longed to visit. Balbec. Balbec, Mama. You'll like it at Balbec, and so will your grandmother. I don't want to go. Now then. I don't want to go without you. Oh, don't be silly. I don't like new bedrooms. I won't be able to sleep. Oh no, Mama! Please. Are you going to be a brave boy for me, Mama? You have a life without me. You're happy to live without me. First time I thought that. You'll be fine. Ancaville, Marcouville, Douville, my stations for the cross. Arambouville, Saint Malavieux, Mama. I don't feel very well, Granny. Yes. Well, I don't. It's a nice room. I'm just saying. I'm just telling you how I feel. But look at the view you have. I think we should go home. Right over the sands. You'll sit here. No. You'll sit here drinking in. We the... should go back to Paris. You'll get used to it. No, I won't. I'm going out. Where? To buy a few things. Things we need. But what's the point if we're leaving? If we go or stay, there are things we need. Each dawn, scratching on the walls separated our rooms, unable to be alone. Please, Granny. Haunted. Granny, please come in. I'm sorry. Please come in now. I'm here. Granny. My little mouse. Did I wake you? Did my mousey think I'd let him lie awake without me? I'm here. I'm here. Imagining my room at home without me. It was like being dead. And now you're dead, Granny. Where are you? Shush. 
And everywhere I look, by the sea, on the sands, by the bandstand, on the promenade, girls. Girls climbing a hill on foot or on a bicycle. Girls in a cart or girls in a carriage. A farm girl driving her cow or reclining in the back of a wagon. A shopkeeper's daughter taking the air. A fashionable young lady erect on the back seat of a landau. It didn't matter who. Girls. Girls. Everywhere. Everywhere. I couldn't make love to them. I was too ill. Couldn't go out by myself to meet them. Oh, no. Couldn't do that. Granny says. Like a man on a starvation diet, at least I was happy knowing that someone could taste these peaches. And the universe was once again interesting to me. Yes. You see? You must be tired of us now. Not at all. What could be nice? A friend of my grandmother's, Mrs. de Ville Parisi, met by chance in the hotel restaurant. We were lucky to have run across one another. Accepting her offer of rides into the Normandy countryside. I'm always surprised to see people taking things so seriously nowadays. <laughs> people are too free with the word genius. That's what I think. Take Chateaubriand, whom I believe you enjoy. He used to visit my father. Then, one day, down towards Udimesny. He was quite a pleasant person when you were alone with him, because then he was simple, straightforward, amusing, but... The whole of Balbec suddenly dissolves. I haven't felt this happy, this light, since Combray. Something is happening. Had I ever been to Balbec? Did I dream it? Is Mrs. Ville Parisi a character in a book I'm reading? Up ahead, three trees on the horizon. Quite clear now. They... they seem to be hiding something from me. Like an object placed out of reach. What is it? Where have I seen them before? Take me with you. Back to life. Carriage turns. We're going away from them. The only thing that could make me happy. Their message. What you don't learn from us today, you will never know. And a part of you will be lost forever. Chateaubriand, even an audience, always talked about these things. Marcel. Hmm? Are you dreaming? I never knew my father. Consider yourself lucky. Shot. Oh, God. Nearly. Do you want to serve? Tennis with Robert de saint loup en Oh, what's the point? If I'd known my father, I think it would have been better. How? A true command. How? It's complicated, believe me. Well, go on. Tell me all about it. Uh, I'd need more information. Oh, would you? In your case, yes. I never rush to diagnoses. Oh. Am I boring you? No. Am I? No, Robert. I sometimes think I can be very boring, that's all. You out of breath? A bit. There's nothing. But we'll stop. Why? We'll stop. Come on, I'm being thoughtless. You thrashed me. Oh, you did very well. I'm an animal and you are... What? On another plane. Oh, right. Thank you. I mean, we're, I'm glad we're friends. I'm really glad we're friends. I've got to go now. You see, I am boring you. My grandmother is expecting me. Why? Why? For dinner, Robert. Eat with me. Your grandmother won't mind, will she? Eat with me. Well, I don't know. She... she can have dinner with my aunt and exchange views on whatever old ladies exchange views are. Come on. Oh, maybe she's above that sort of thing, is she? Gossip, I mean. Well, you know... I admire her. I do. You're very close, I think, aren't you? Yes. I didn't want to be alone tonight, that's all. Listen, if, if you've got to go, that's okay. I understand. Wait here. Tall, slim, noble Robert. You eaten at the Reeve Bell before? No. It's all right. He said he'd slept with most of the young women in the room. It's a bit posh. My mouth opened. Uh, give us some more champagne, will you, Paul? Sir. He said it matter-of-factly, as though telling me he'd bought a pair of shoes recently. You like champagne? Yes. Well, I mean, I've never had it. Mm, not everybody does. I mean, I do. This table, all right? You're not in a draft. No. My mistress has taught me many things, and one of them is always to be kind to animals. You've got a mistress. Dogs, principally. What? Yes, and um, canaries. And parrots. She's an actress. Well, she aspires, you know. Well, in a 
She has made me realise that society women are boring. No, but they're beautiful. Boring. Take it from me. The moment of passion, all well and good, but it passes. Does it? Oh yes. And then what? You know what I mean. She has cured me of frivolity. That's the point. I'm going to be a writer, Robert. Are you? Excellent. What sort of thing? Hmm. Well, what sort of thing are you going to write? Well, I haven't decided yet. You haven't? Well, not yet. Oh, good for you. Um, where's our champagne? I'm going to start work on it tomorrow. Coming, sir. Hmm? Oh, excellent. Adolescence is the only time we learn anything. When I think back to those days, there's hardly a single action I don't regret. Yet why? I should rather regret that I haven't got the spontaneity now to do the things I used to do then. <laughs> You're my very good friend, Robert. <coughs> Absolutely. More champagne. Just a little. A、uh, Paul, another bottle. Sir. Is that? What? Isn't that? What? Over there, I'll steer. Isn't it? The painter. Who? He's brilliant. Is he? A genius. Gosh. Apparently, he gets up at night and takes a young model down to the seashore, and paints her in the nude. Doesn't he get cold? What? <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I mean the girls in the nude. Oh well, well. Why didn't we say hello to him? To this genius? No, no, no. Couldn't. Why? I couldn't do that. Why not? Drop him a note. Good evening. We think you're a genius. At an age when enthusiasm cannot keep silent. We watch the old man read our note. He stands, and we think he's going to pass us by. Your note. Thank you. Very kind, sir. We spoke only the simple truth. We are two inexperienced art lovers. Won't you join us? No, I.、Uh, not tonight. But,、uh, young man, sir, you're welcome to visit my studio at any time. Hmm. I think the old boy liked you. When are you going to go and see Mr. Elstir? It's an opportunity for you. Right. He recognised your sensitivity, I think. I don't know. Yes, he did. Are you listening to me? Four girls advancing across the sands. One of them. A tall one jumps over a sleeping lawyer. Her plump friend with laughing eyes is pushing a bicycle. Let him look. Even the lift operator could see it. Who, who are they? Her whole life filled me with desire. Oh yeah, got your eye out. I beg your pardon. A sorrowful desire because I felt it wasn't going to be fulfilled. Someone called you fancy. If you have no more to say to me, then、uh, one of them's called Simone. That I can tell you. Does she ride a bicycle? I believe it has been known for her to swing a leg over the saddle. <laughs> See the one you're after. Here. Looks like a goer to me. Thank you. I felt that multiplication of myself that we call happiness. I wanted to possess what was in her eyes. My family don't like my mistress. Why? They don't understand her. She has a past, but, but that's not the point, is it? I don't know. If you met her, which they won't, then, then I think I've written to her, told her all about you. She can't wait to meet you. What's the matter? I know that one day she'll leave me. That's the point. When she's waiting until her nest is feathered, then. I don't know. I, I say to her, tell me what I've done wrong. I'm quite ready to acknowledge my faults. And she says nothing, nothing for days on end. And then when she replies, it's rubbish, it's meaningless. And she says to me, "Don't come to Paris. I'm not ready." I mean, what's a man to do? What are you going to do? What can I do? I'm due back at my barracks. Oh yes. I'm a soldier, Marcel. <laughs> yes, I know. Can't all be writers, you know. Catching the morning train to Doncier. Robert. When I look at him closely, I see the bone structure beneath the triangular face, vigorous, noble. Robert, don't look. What? I am being looked at. Robert, come. A man of about forty, very tall, black moustache, slapping the leg of his trousers nervously, and looking at me. Robert, it's my uncle. Robert, oh God, please don't ask me to introduce you. The same hard look that had been fixed on me at Tansonville when I was a child. 
I'm waiting. When Mrs. Swan had called Gilbert away. That gentleman was Baron Charlot. Did you see him? Charlot? Is it? Yes, Baron Charlot Palamé de Guermont. Guermont? Yes, keep walking. The Guermonts have a place near Combra. Yes, keep walking. Keep... Robert, I command you to stop. Oh, too bloody late now. Uncle! Are we playing ducks and drakes now, Robert? Uncle, uh, this is my friend, Marcel. Ah, yes. And uh, Marcel's here with his grandmother. Ah, oh, yes. Come to tea. <laughs> <laughs> Young scum. What's got your goat? You're like women. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I can't bear that sort of thing. The place is overrun with you. Yeah, never mind. Robert, tea. I insist. I can't, Uncle. Why? I can't come to tea. Why? I'm going back tonight. Your friend, then? And Marcel? You can bring your granny, your chaperone. She isn't my chaperone. No, Mum, bring her anyway. I love old ladies. <laughs> Another of the Gamont clan, and I am charmed by them all. Robert, the Duchess, and now... It is Charlie. May I come in? No, I'm in bed, sir. Who seems to be charmed by me? Never mind. <laughs> I've seen people in bed before. <laughs> what is it, sir? Robert tells me that you suffer from nighttime despair. You shouldn't have told him, Robert. So, I bought you a book. I believe you enjoy the works of the novelist Bergot. I do. You do, yes. Please take it then. <laughs> Thank you. You haven't, perhaps, any personal merit. I don't know. But for a time, at least, you have youth, and that's an attraction. Personally, I love the night. <laughs> We're all different. I love roses. I have a friend whom the sight of roses throws into a fever. Do you suppose that makes me feel superior to him? Oh, I try to understand everything. I condemn nothing. And don't feel too sorry for yourself. You have placed your affection wisely with your grandmother. I say wisely because it is an affection which is returned. So many are not. Good night. And there he is again, the next day. Ah, my young friend. Fresh from the sea like a lobster. Come here. Pinching my neck. <laughs> I am to tell you your grandmother wants to see you. But the truth is, he doesn't give a damn about his old granny. I adore her. I adore her. I don't think so. I do. You're still young. Profit by two things. Don't speak when it's not necessary, and don't speak at all until you know what you're talking about. I do know what I... Good I'm... day. I want my book back within the hour. I made a mistake talking to you last night. I can see that now. I've learnt my lesson. Oh, and by the way, any man who wears anchors on his bathing clothes needs to take a careful look in the mirror. Good day. I returned the book. He sent it back in a binding of Morocco leather with an inlaid panel representing a spray of forget-me-nots. Oh, Shalou, what did I mean to you? And you to me? At last I visit Elstir's cottage to placate my grandmother. Sir, I'm very grateful for your time. It's like a laboratory for a new world. The light at the window. Come in. The creator, brush in hand. Come. Is finishing an outline of the setting sun. Yes. What do you think of that? The watercolour? Yes. Thought it might interest you. It's a young girl. Go on. An actress? Is it? Well? It's very good. Curious. Yes. Why? Uh, I'm sorry, I don't know. What do you see? A man. She's a man. Is that it? There's a dreamy sadness in her eyes. As though she's about to say, I'm a boyish girl. And now it's changing. Ah. Now she's effeminate. She's a young man and vicious. And gone again. Now she's a woman. Do you know her? You've called it Miss Sacripon. Yes. It's Mrs. Swan, is it? You know Charles Swan, don't you? Yes. That's his wife, in a previous incarnation. <laughs> Funny old world, isn't it? The creator, brush in hand, is finishing an outline of the setting sun. Going out along the cliff path, 
needing to escape. The old painter hobbling along in front of me, suddenly looking down. The tribe of young women, their lithe forms walking in the sea. Sir, you know that girl down there? Where's this? On the sand. The girls. I know them. The one cycling. What's her name? Albertine Simone. You want to meet them? No. Up to you. You sure? Albertine. I assume they were all the mistresses of racing cyclists. Did you? Good imagination. In fact, they're all solid middle-class girls. But don't despair. There's plenty of time for them to go off the rails. I invented her. When we love, we impose our inventions on the beloved. Hour by hour, I had imagined Albertine. Here, let me tie it for you. When we're about to start on an eagerly awaited journey, why is it we always ask ourselves whether it's worth the trouble? Granny, I couldn't live without you. On my way to a party of Elsteers, where I was to meet the girl. I couldn't. Don't say that. What would you do if I, if I went on a journey? I'd be all right for a few hours or days, but what if I was away for months? What? What if I was away? Don't say that. We must be pluckier. I'd be fine. I'm going now. Come on, come and meet her. I want to finish my Claire first. I'm... Oh yes, I've arranged this party for you. No, oh? well, I was just going to look at this painting. That's all. She's waiting. Huh? Well, have I got any cream on my face? No. How about chocolate? No. Best foot forward. Right. Albertine, Marcel. How do you do? Jolly pleased to meet you. He's a very intelligent young man. Oh, please. Very learned. Very shy too. I'll leave you. Marvelous hair, wonderful eyes, but where was the girl I'd seen on the beach wheeling her bicycle? You've got chocolate on your mouth. I don't mind. I'm not. I'm not any of those things he described. You know, we never are, though, are we? I'll watch. I mean, when one is introduced to someone for the first time, one always feels as though one is someone else, which is not uninteresting. However, do you cycle? No. As far as the pleasure of meeting her was concerned. I wasn't aware of it until later. Tennis? What? Do you play tennis? No, well, not all that well. Oh. I have asthma. What do you do then? Pleasure in this respect is like photography. I watch. Doesn't that get boring? No. What we take in the presence of the beloved object is merely a negative which we develop later in that dark room inside us. What are you thinking about? What? What? You seem as though you're thinking about something. No, nothing. I saw you looking at us on the beach. I'm sorry. I don't mind. Well, even so. Don't you want to know anything about us? I expect I do. Yes. There was a tall one, remember? Carrying golf clubs, jumped over a, a lawyer. That's Andre. Andre. My best friend. She's perfectly shocking. Everyone's in love with her. And a, a blonde one. Giselle. She's awful. I'm sick of her. A, a tall one with a hooded cane. Rosamond. A good friend, though not very interesting. Huh. What? So strange, this commonplace young woman. Quite touching, yet so different from that other mysterious Albertine I had first seen silhouetted against the sea. Soon after that, I'm accosted by a young woman I don't recognise at all. Hello. She wears a toque and carries a muff. Lovely weather. It's another Albertine. Really, the perpetual summer of Balbec is pure bollocks. If you'll excuse my descent into the demotic, as Andre says. Ask the question of Albertine's beauty spot. Where was it? On her cheek. On her chin, it seemed to wander. I nailed it finally to her upper lip, but who knows? She changes in front of my eyes. Aren't you bored, Marcel? No. You're not like me. I love sports. Don't you ever go dancing? Octave, this is Marcel. God, it's cold, isn't it? Been playing golf. The washout. Was Andre playing? Uh, she went round in eighty-seven. Oh, that's a record. I went round in eighty-nine yesterday. Bye. You going to buy me a hot chocolate? Example: Albertine's use of the word "perfectly" instead of "completely." He's perfectly charming on the surface. Though this use may have nothing to recommend it. But underneath, he's perfectly horrible. It was least different from what I'd expected from the girl I first saw on the beach. 
Let him look. The Bacanthe with the bicycle. Or the orgiastic mules from the golf course. Marcel, I'm going now. What about the hot chocolate? Some other day. Talking to her felt like dropping pebbles down a bottomless pit. I had no idea where they were falling. We're playing Hunt the Slipper in a little wood on the clifftop. There's a young man standing next to Albertine. I hate him. I want to be the one touching her hands. Think where it might take me. Her skin pink, almost mauve. And now, I'm next to her. Her hair falling about her shoulders. Albertine, you have the tresses of Laura Dianti. Her face flushed. What? What are you on about? Her sweet breath whispering to me. Don't you know where the slipper is? I'm her confidant, her co-conspirator. You always ought to wear your hair like that. I'm looking! I'm looking! <laughs> what are you talking about? Why can't you take it? I've been shoving it to you for an hour. See it? Peg! <laughs> that was your fault. There's no point in playing unless you're going to play properly. God! A month after this, Albertine tells me she's going to spend a night at our hotel. She's catching an early train back to her aunt's. I'll be going to bed early. Come and watch me eat, if you like. Third floor. No. No? No, I'm going to visit a friend on the fourth floor. Gotcha. I beg your pardon? Nothing. Thank you. Say hello to Miss Simone for me. I prance for joy across the carpet. I imagine her in pink satin. Come to me. Behind that door, she's lying on her bed. I move as though over a liquid stream towards her. Tonight, I am omnipotent. I am here to claim my inheritance. Come in. Death could have struck me down. I've got a bit of a cold, sorry. Sit down. Oh, it would have seemed to me a trivial thing at that moment. What game would you like to play? Yes. Would? Anything you like. How about whist? Sure. What are you doing? You know. What? You know. Listen, would you... Marcel, get the hell off me or I'll ring the bell. Not for nothing does a young girl invite a young man up to her room in secret. I told myself I was about to discover the fragrance which this strange fruit concealed. I told myself he who dares wins. I told myself a lot of things. Don't you see? This is our time. <laughs> Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! She said she'd forgive me. In time. I don't think I was in the wrong, actually. Really? What kind of girls do you know, then? I mean, if someone can... Give someone some pleasure. Why not? God! You said I was your friend. You are, but what kind... I mean, I've got other friends. None of them would have tried what you did. Just out of curiosity, doesn't anything strike you as immoral? Yes. What? Girls going with girls. You're joking. No. That's a nightmare for me. That's a nightmare. And the next day she left. And soon after that, the season ended. My other friends left too, not all at once, but like swallows, one by one. And now, at night, when I revisit those Baalbek days, I hear the seas murmur, and sometimes still, it is the sea to which I entrust the ship of my dreams before I sleep. And at such times, I have the illusion that the waves have entered me and filled me with their charm, like those lessons which you learn by heart while you're sleeping. Adolescence is the only time we learn anything. <laughs>